Well, hello, this is Brother Mike from Ruhama Baptist Church. And once again, it's a blessing to me to be able to be with you and share God's Word here on, uh, on WZOB. And it's a great opportunity and privilege. And uh, also, I'm just thankful for you that are listening. So I know there's some of you that listen every week. And uh, a big shout out to you and God bless you. And I hope that you're praying for us and uh, praying that God, God will use the broadcast to encourage many. And uh, th those that are homebound, that the broadcast can be used to help in your spiritual growth. And you that are traveling, that it can be an encouragement in your travels. And uh, if you're tuning in maybe for the first time, that this might be a, a great blessing to you and uh, that, that uh, you might, it might cause you or provoke you to look to the Lord and to know that he is uh, the one that can help us. He's our refuge and our strength a very present help in times of trouble. So whatever you're going through in your life, you can look to the Lord, our God, and find in Him the solution uh, to whatever that you might be going through in your life. And my friend, listen, I, if you're on a sick bed and uh, you've been uh, suffering maybe for a long time, I, I want to assure you that His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He's watching you as well, just like the the old song says. He he's here, he's present, he's looking, he's watching. He knows uh, the feeling of our infirmities. The scripture says that he's he knows Jesus knows the feeling of our infirmities. He knows what we're going through. He understands that, and we can look to him to help us even our in our most difficult days. So it's you know it's a privilege for me to be able to repeat and share God's word with you uh, week after week, and to be able to proclaim His truth and to try to encourage you through His word. And so today we're we're uh, going to continue with our a few a few messages that I've been sharing related to centurion or soldiers that had faith uh, that are, that show up in the Bible and this one especially is uh, Cornelius in Acts chapter ten and how that here is this man Cornelius that uh, um, shows up in the in the gospel here. And uh, not only we, we have uh, a soldier's faith that we looked at, but here we've got a man, uh, another soldier, that uh, we're considering his faith and, and uh, his, uh, his need and his vision. You know, the Lord knew his name. The Lord, uh, uh, Cornelius, knew it was the Lord that was calling him. What is it, Lord? Uh, Cornelius was obedient to the vision that the Lord had for his life. And um, Peter received a vision from God. And, and uh, to go to the Gentile Cornelius, we shared this last week, and he went there and the Lord spoke to uh, Peter and uh, he, he said, by no means, Lord, but yet he realized this was God's will for him to go to the Gentile's house, and he went there, and of course we know in the text that he proclaimed the gospel there, and um, uh, he explained why he was sent, uh, Cornelius told Peter why he uh, sent for him, and they were waiting there to hear the message of the gospel from the apostle Peter when he arrived. What a blessing that was. Now, I want to look at this story from a little different perspective or a, another perspective. Let me put it that way uh, today and uh, how this this godly man, Cornelius, um, calls out for more more certain certainty in his faith and that the Lord was working with him. Uh, in order to bring this about. And so God, I think, stirred the heart of Cornelius, this man who was not a Christian. We can't call him a Christian. He was a God-fearer. He feared the God of uh, Israel, and he, he worshiped in the synagogue to the extent that he was able to. 
uh, and acknowledge God, and he was generous towards God's people. He sh- he helped he helped them, and uh, uh, was was generous and gave uh, alms and pra- he practiced his belief, basic beliefs. And uh, he the Bible says he prayed to God continually. This is the kind of man that Cornelius was. He he called upon the Lord continually, praying to the Lord. And, and of course, we're told to do that. Uh, but yet, he still was not saved. He was doing all of these religious things in his life, but yet he was still not saved. My friend, I don't know where you are today, but uh, it could be that you're at a place in your life uh, you've tried, maybe you've attended church, you've listened to the message on on uh, radio or on television, you've heard about the Lord, you, you have a lot of information, but yet you've tried and tried, but yet still something is missing. And you know you're, it, you haven't been completed or you haven't taken that step of faith toward the Lord. You know, it's possible to believe in and pray to God and attend worship regularly and still not be saved. Now, I want to talk about this today and the seriousness of it. And I hope this will be uh, an encouragement to you to point you in the right direction and to help you in your uh, pursuit of truth in your own personal life. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, right now, just help us, I ask. Speak to the hearts of those that are listening, that you might draw them close to you. Today is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a little bit. I mean, we've we've gone through the story, basic story of Cornelius. He was a centurion and a devout man. He feared God, the Bible says, with all of his household and um, uh he gave alms or donations. He was very generous to give to the Jewish people, and he prayed to God continually. So I guess he's similar to that uh, that centurion that we found in the Gospels that that helped to build a synagogue, and so he he's similar to that man. Uh, but and and he this particular uh, centurion prays to God continually. He's uh, about the ninth hour of the day, which would be three in the afternoon, he he saw a vision, an angel of God who had just come in and said, Cornelius, and fixing his gaze on him and being much alarmed, he said, what is it, Lord? So let, let me just talk to you. I mean, this says of Cornelius, he was a devout man. And I think that tells us that he practiced his religion. He He was sincere in his belief. Uh, he he prayed to God continually. He was almost a proselyte to Judaism. A proselyte would mean a non-Jewish born person who joins the Jewish religion. He was almost. He, he fit in the category of a God-fearer uh, rather than a full-blown uh, proselyte. But he uh, he accepted Jewish beliefs and practices and even practiced some of them as far as prayer goes and as far as being generous toward the Jewish people. My friend, but he still was not saved. Something was missing in his life. Even though he did these religious things, even though he did these good things, still something was missing. And you may be in this condition. You've done these things. You think you're wondering why things aren't right, why things don't seem right in your life spiritually, and there's you're troubled about many things. And yet, um, my friend, I want to say to you, make sure you're saved. Peter the apostle said in his epistle, Second Peter, he said to make your election and calling secure. In other words, make sure that you're saved. Make sure of that. And so here was Cornelius' problem. Here he, was, he had done everything, and probably to the best of his ability or knowledge, to the limit of his understanding. And yet he still 
was not saved. So it, it's possible to be in that condition. And I think a lot of people maybe are in that condition. They may even have gone through, gone to church for many, many years. I remember a dear man in a nursing home in a town where I was working at the time, and we shared the gospel there, and I, I had a burden to talk with him, and he was uh, 80, probably 80 plus years old, and um, we uh, uh, talk, I talked to him about Christ and how to be saved, how to be sure of it, and then uh, I talked to him about praying to the Lord and calling on his name, and he just simply told me he didn't know how to pray. And I think many people may be this way. You know, even the disciples of the Lord, they, they, they said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So it's, you, you know, this particular man I talked to, he had been to church in his life. And, um, and I'm sure he felt that, that uh, he, he had done, he probably felt that he had done some of the right things in his life, but yet he didn't know how to converse with God at all. And, and, and if you're in that condition, I just want to encourage you. The Bible says, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I think the, the intent of that passage is call believing in Christ. That's definitely the way of salvation. When we call on the Lord, we turn from our sin and turn from ourselves and turn toward the Lord Jesus. This is how we're saved. We have to believe Christ. We have to believe that he, he's the Son of God and that he died for our sins and that he rose again on the third day. And, and we take him as our Lord and Savior. As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become children of God, even to those that believe on his name. And my friend, I hope today you believe, you trust in the name, the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. You know, there's something else about the Cornelius. Uh, remember, he, the, the Bible tells us that uh, he feared God with all of his household. I mean, that's an interesting passage, verse there in, in Acts 10, verse 2. In Acts 10, verse 24, it says, uh, when Peter arrived at Cornelius' house, uh, the following day he entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them, that would be those with P Peter and those with him, and had called together his relatives and close friends. He called them all together. My friend, he wanted them to hear what Peter had to say. And um, when Peter arrived, he found many people assembled there. Now, so so here is Cornelius, this good, devout Gentile man who believes in the one true God, but he he knows something's missing in his life. He He wants to understand what it means. And so he's the angel has instructed him to get Peter over there to his house. Peter came, and when he got there, his friends and relatives and household are all gathered waiting to hear the message of the gospel from Peter. Now, he, here's the thing I, I want us to consider about this particular point, that it's possible for us to have others around us who care for us and, and care about our spiritual condition and still not be saved. It's possible. All around Cornelius were those that respected and cared for him. And he respected and cared for many people, and he had enough to have them present there when Peter arrived. So friend, listen, don't merely depend upon those around you, but rather have a personal relationship with the Lord yourself. Those around you are very important for your Christian life and for your godliness but they cannot save you. Only the Lord Jesus and faith in the Lord Jesus can save us. That's all. He's the only one that's able to do that. We are commanded to assemble together. So in that respect, Cornelius and his friends and relatives and household were doing the right thing to gather in order to hear the message. But we have to remember that uh, uh, we're we're responsible for what we know. 
And so Cornelius had a limitation to his knowledge at that point. But it is possible to, to have around us the others that have a like mind and all of that, and yet we're still not Save. My friend, listen, I, I hope today that even though you may have parents or grandparents that are saved, you may have friends or relatives, children, you may have some that are preachers or deacons, you may have some Sunday school to, in your family or among your friends, but still, my friend, before God, you will have to answer one day for your own personal self, your own personal uh, uh, condition before God. And, and uh, that's what this, these messages are all about, trying to point us on to what Peter and the apostles were going to preach regarding Jesus and our hope that's only in Christ, only Christ can save. Only Christ can save. We want our friends and relatives and neighbors and, and our household to know about Jesus and to put their trust in Jesus. We want that to happen, but they, they can't save us. And even if they're saved, that, that doesn't save us. And so, friend, listen, may you uh, turn in your heart and mind to the Lord Jesus yourself and uh, put your faith and trust fully in him and in him alone. Okay, thirdly, let me think, of, I want you to think about this aspect of uh, Cornelius' experience and this story that we're trying to explain. Uh, he had a vision, you know, in three, about three o'clock in the afternoon, he had a clear vision of an angel that, that appeared to him. And, uh, he said, Cornelius, and Cornelius is gazing upon him. He's shocked, you know. It's very much alarmed, the Bible says. And he said, what is it? And he said, your prayers and generosity, your alms, have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send some men to Joppa and send for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. He's staying at the tanner named Simon's house, whose house is by the sea. And the angel who was speaking to him left. He summoned two of his servants and a devout soldier and those who were his personal attendants. And after he had explained everything to them, he sent them on to Joppa. Now, here's a miracle that happened uh, while um, Cornelius was praying. God sent him a vi an angel uh, in a vision to him. And th this is inter interesting because he clearly saw it. And you know, when Peter arrived, he came, Cornelius falls down at his feet, you know, because this angel had sent for him. And so Cornelius misunderstood, but he reacted. And uh, at that point, remember, he's still not saved. Uh, but he, even though he had a vision of an angel, he's still not saved. That didn't save him. Um, uh, we are not to trust in anything except our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> as important as miracles are, they are not the substance of salvation. The miracles that we're, we're to hold dear and to hold near to us are the miracles of the incarnation, Jesus Christ, God's Son, born into this world. The, the miracle of the incarnation, the miracle of the atonement that God's Son, the Lamb of God, would die on the cross for our sins that we might be forgiven of our sins. That the miracle of the resurrection, that God's Son who died on the cross was buried and rose again. He was raised from the dead. And so many witnessed to that. Uh, and... Uh, Many were able to witness to that fact that he was raised from the dead. And because he lives, we shall live also. And because he died for our sins, we can know forgiveness of sins and assurance of salvation. That's the great news of the gospel. But here's a, a word of warning, my friend. It's possible even to see visions and to dream dreams and to see miracles, but still not be saved. It's possible. Many people. Jesus said there would be those that would say, Lord, haven't we done miracles in your name, basically? And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. 
So it's possible for those things to happen, even close to us, and, and for us not to be saved. Oh, my friend, please today put your faith and trust and hope only in Jesus. Believe in him, trust in him, depend upon him. Have your faith and hope only in Jesus. You know, the Bible says of Cornelius, he was a God-fearer, you know, and, and that, that he gave alms to the Jewish people. This tells us something. He was a sincere man in his beliefs. He loved the Jewish people. He gave to the poor. And, and he said, even after Peter arrived, we are all here present before God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. You see, he was serious about hearing this message that Peter was bringing. He was sincere, but yet he was not saved yet. When he hears the truth, he responds properly. And God witnesses to his work in the lives of Cornelius and those in his household. And the gospel was effectively working among the Gentiles and for salvation. It's true. But as sincere as you may be, sincerity will not save you. It's important to be sincere, but we can be sincerely wrong. My friend, listen to me. You know, and, and I, I, I don't want anyone to mistake, you know, True faith for sin, uh, sincerity for true faith. Only we're saved only by grace through faith. It's not of ourselves. Whether it's miracles or whether it's whether it's sincerity or whether it's religious upbringing, none of those things can save us. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ, and only the Son of God can save us. If our hope is in Him, then we have assurance. If we've never seen a miracle or never done a miracle or never even feel like we've had a prayer answered, we can be sure that if our faith is in Christ, we know Him and that He is our Lord and Savior and He's our confidence to, because His Word is true and He is the living Son of God. Amen. I hope today your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ and him only, no matter where you are or what you're going through. Just trust him. Look up to him. He's there. He's present. He's near. He promised to his people, I will never leave you nor forsake you. A great promise from God's word. And you can depend on his promises. My friend, listen today. If you've never been saved or you don't have this full assurance of salvation, call upon the name of Jesus. He's living. He is our access to the Father. Through Christ, we have assurance that we know God. Oh, my friend, trust in him and trust in him alone. Oh, Lord Jesus, today, help those listening to be encouraged Keep your hand upon them, work in their hearts and lives that many would have this assurance of salvation, confidence in the day of judgment because their trust is in Christ alone for their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.